projectile motion is when something is um, projected or it's thrown, say, well, we'll start with horizontal, but then also gravity has the chance to act. So it's being thrown above the ground, um, but gravity is going to pull it back. But at the same time, unlike falling objects where it just went up and down, this one um, now has some horizontal velocity as well and therefore is moving somewhat horizontally and moving vertically at the same time. Okay, so this makes things a little bit more complicated because now we have two directions that we really need to look at and analyze. We need to look at the horizontal and the vertical differently, okay? So we're gonna just start with horizontal projectiles um, and then I just strongly advise you to just do some questions and examples with just horizontal present projectiles before you go on to ones at an angle, okay? Um, but again, what makes this so difficult is you have to analyze the horizontal or x direction separately from the vertical or y direction, okay? So, um, if something's projected horizontally, meaning it's thrown horizontally, but it's being thrown above the ground, so then gravity is also going to work downwards on it. So what's happening here if it's being thrown horizontally and it's having this kind of motion where it's kind of doing like that, right? And there's the ground and then it hits the ground. Um, the velocity, what we need to do is break things into the X and Y direction, which is going to be really, really weird for you right now. Okay? So I'm just looking at the velocity in the X direction and comparing it with the velocity in the Y direction. Why is that? It's because uh, in what direction is it even experiencing acceleration? Well, we know that the force of gravity is pushing downwards, and therefore it's experiencing acceleration downwards, but it's not actually experiencing any acceleration in the x direction, meaning my initial velocity here in the x direction is the same as my final velocity here in the x direction. Obviously, in the y direction, it's very differently, okay? So you're just looking at what's happening in the x direction versus the y direction, okay? So that's uh, the first thing. So the velocity in the x direction initially is the same as the velocity in the x direction finally because there's no acceleration. There's nothing pushing or pulling it in the x direction once it's been thrown, okay? And that's what acceleration is. It's the result of a push or a pull. So that's how I want you to think about it. So in our y direction then, we know that our initial y velocity is zero in horizontal projectiles. Why is it uh, zero? Because if you look at this very uh, first point, if you're projecting it horizontally, initially it's not even moving up or down. It's just moving horizontally in the beginning. And then of course our final velocity in the y direction is definitely not zero. Also keep in mind, we're always looking at the point just before it hits the ground. We're never considering the point at which it hits the ground, okay? Because a lot of people want to say, well, the final y velocity is zero too because it hits the ground. Um, no, okay? We need to look at the point just before that because once it hits the ground, there's an outside force working and that's a whole other situation, okay? So we in physics, we always need to kind of freeze frame these certain... Um, pieces of motion before another force acts because that's then a whole other situation, okay? So that's really, really important. So with horizontal projectiles, my initial velocity is zero, okay? But in projectiles, since there's no push or pull in the x direction, then there is no acceleration in the x direction, okay? There's only acceleration downwards, which is acceleration due to gravity. So it's nine point, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so what does this mean? So if in every single projectile, the x direction has no acceleration, the y direction does. So that means all of our equations that work for acceleration, we can use in the y direction, okay? The only equation we can't use is v, v equals d over t. 
because again, the y direction has that acceleration. In the x direction, since there's no acceleration, we can only use one equation, v equals d over t, and it's just a rearranged here. Okay, I know that's kind of crazy to you to start thinking about, but it's okay. Just start working through it and you will get there. So the thing is, how do I overlap? How do I go from one direction to the other? Well, there is one variable that overlaps and that is time, right? The time it takes for it to fall is the same time as it takes for it to travel horizontally. So therefore, if I find time in one direction, I can rearrange to find it in the other, okay? So our first step is quite often finding time in one direction, just depending on what we are given, okay? So say I'm able to find time using this equation here, because I have the acceleration in the y direction, I have the initial and final velocity in the y direction. So if I have that, I can find time and then I can go back over here and find velocity or displacement in the x direction depending on what it needs for from us. Okay, so that's pretty much what you're doing. So the name of the game is usually finding time in whatever direction you have more information in. Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like. We have a ball thrown horizontally from the roof of a building that's 56 meters tall. Okay, let's just draw a little something. Okay, so there we go, 56 meters. So that looks like our displacement in the y direction, right? Because that's our vertical displacement. And it lands 45 meters from the base. Okay, so what's the base? Well, here's the base of the building. So there's 45 meters. So that looks like our displacement in the x direction, right? Because that's horizontal. So the projectile is doing something like that, right? It's starting just by going horizontal and then gravity is going to start working on it and it's going to go down and hit the ground. But of course, we're only going to look at the moment before it hits the ground. So again, let's see what we have. We have displacement, the vertical displacement. So I'm going to call that displacement in the y direction. So that's going to be 56 meters. Okay. I have displacement in the x direction, which is 45 meters. And what, of course, do we have if something's falling? We always have the acceleration. You may have noticed I didn't put any negatives there. I can. But since everything is going downwards, I'm going to go ahead and say downwards is positive. Okay? Just because I can, because everything's downwards in this situation. If everything's downwards, I might as well say downwards is positive. It makes life so much easier. Okay, so like I said, the name of the game at first is usually finding um, our time and then going over to what we need to find. So we want the ball's initial speed. Okay, well remember, this is a horizontal projectile. So what's happening happening initially? Is there any initial speed in the y direction at that point? Is it moving vertically at all? No. So that's another thing we know. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero meters per second. So we're if we're looking for the initial speed, well, the only speed at the beginning is in the x direction. So that means we're looking for velocity in the x direction. Okay? That's what the initial speed is because initially it's just going horizontally. So we're just looking at the speed uh, in the x direction. So obviously we have distance in the x direction. So when we use v equals d over t, then I obviously need the time it takes to fall. Uh, so to get that, I'm going to have to start with my y direction. So that means I'm only looking at these equations, okay? I can only look at these ones in the y direction. I can never look at v equals d over t in the y direction because we cannot use that equation when there's acceleration. And I can only look at this acceleration once, or sorry, this equation once I get to the x direction, which is nice and easy. So y direction, we have a lot of options. So remember, what do I have? I have distance or displacement, I have acceleration, and I have my initial velocity. So what deals with that? That one deals with all of those. Okay. And what else? 
Everything else has final velocity. Now, in the falling objects uh, video and lesson, I told you not to use this equation right here for one sp very specific um, situation is because the, there's time in two places. Now, there's one exception to that rule. There is one situation in which this equation becomes very, very easy to use, and that is when your initial velocity is zero. Because if this is zero, what's zero times t? Oh my goodness, it's just zero. So this is actually a situation in which this becomes a very nice equation because that initial velocity is zero. So if the initial velocity isn't zero and you need to find time, never, ever use this equation. It's way too complicated, okay? Uh, there's, it's just not worth it. But in this case, since vi, y is zero, this whole term ends up being zero because we're multiplying. And if we multiply by zero, you just get zero. And so look at that. I have time just in one place now, and that makes our lives so, so much easier, and it's so wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to solve for time here. And I, you notice I didn't put ty on there because we don't need to because time is the same in both y and x, but everything else should be specifically uh, labeled to be in the y direction. Okay, so when I rearrange, that's what I should get. And let's plug in those numbers. Okay, and so when we do that and we work that out, we get 3.4 seconds. Okay, so there we go. There's my time that I'm going to use to help me find the velocity in the x direction. Now remember, that is just what I'm writing down. I'm not writing down the full thing, but when I actually calculate the velocity in the y direction, or sorry, in the x direction, I'm going to use the full number from my calculator. I'm not just going to round and use 3.4. Okay, we want accurate values here. And if you round, you might not get a fully accurate value. Okay, so uh, in the x direction, well, we only have one direction in the x and I don't even know if it's left or right, but I drew it to the right. So I'm going to say that's positive. So velocity in the x direction is equal to d over t. And that's the only equation we can use in the x direction. There is no acceleration, so there's no other equation that applies in the x direction. Okay? But that's okay because it makes velocity really easy to find. Uh, my distance was 45 meters in the x direction, right? Because that's how much it moved horizontally was 45 meters. The 56 only was only how much it moved vertically. And I'm going to divide that by the time we found, which is 3.4 seconds. So that gives us a velocity in the x direction of 13 meters per second to two significant digits, because that's what we're given in the question. And there we go. We're done. That is our velocity uh, in the x direction, which is the same as our initial velocity. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say you have to analyze this in two different directions. You need to look at the y direction and the x direction separately. So sometimes you'll start with the y direction because you have more information there. Sometimes you'll start with the x direction because you have more information there. But always know that your first goal is to find